Welcome to another episode of Eberhardt Outdoors. Uh, this one's gonna be on late season hunting. I've got three totes here, three of the five totes I carry in my van. These are all undergarments in this one, suits, and then that one is basically base layer garments, socks, underwear, just general stuff. So these are airtight, that one is not, uh, because that's all stuff that pretty much goes against my skin. And anytime something's that low below your exterior scent locks to it it's kind of irrelevant as far as you know having a scent control to it you you know you could get out of work and go hunting with your work clothes as long as they're underneath your exterior scent lock suit that's properly cared for you will be fine so i'm not too worried about that and in actuality these undergarments that go underneath your exterior suit i'm not that worried about those as well but uh, I still keep these in an airtight container. And once I use them once, they never go back in this airtight container to contaminate the other stuff. They go in a plastic bag in the back of my van, and then I will use them again as I see fit. And then at some point in time, I will wash these in scent-free detergent and then put them back in here with the non-contaminated undergarments. Same goes with that. Even though that's not an airtight tote, once I wear any of that stuff, because that's all against my skin, so that's collecting skin cells, it's definitely gonna have an odor once I wear it one time. It does not go back in with those pristine base, bottom base garments. So that's, that's pretty important. I put them in a plastic bag so that they don't suck up odors from my van, uh, and then I use them until I think I need to wash them, and then once they're washed in scent-free detergent, and dried, they go back in that tote. Even though it's not airtight, it's relatively airtight. It's just a standard tote. I'm gonna show the layering process. I'm gonna show it in the tree as well, where I physically dress my upper body in the tree once on stand. And layering is an art form. You know, I can go through an entire season without breaking much of a sweat at all. Early season, it's a little bit of a struggle, but late season, you know, these guys that wear these heavy, bulky, exterior garments and basically they walk out in the woods with what they're going to physically be hunting in you're going to sweat and once you get your base garments damp you're going to get cold easier so layering is a definite art form and you always want to carry your layer garments in your backpack if you're going to go a big distance so that you don't get a break of sweat and get your base garments damp from perspiration now there's two scent lock garments that I really love for late season hunting. One of them is uh, called the Wind Brace. Uh, the Wind Brace has a deep napped exterior fleece. It's got a fleece interior. It's got a polyurethane membrane, but there's no insulation in it whatsoever. It's a very comfortable suit and it's designed, in my opinion, I'm the one that got them to make that probably seven or eight years ago. It's designed to layer underneath. So that's why it's no insulation. It's a great suit for like 35, even 30 degree to 50 degree weather. And you layer under it as needed. And it has a polyurethane membrane, so it is also windproof. It's very light, very limp, no insulation, not bulky, uh, but you can see it has a, it has a fleece interior, and it has a relatively heavy fleece exterior and that's to mask the noise of the polyurethane membrane. Polyurethane membranes make noise, and I don't care what company you are, I picked up a Sitka suit the other day that was a lightweight suit in a store. It was 350 bucks with no technology whatsoever, and it was noisier than, I. there's no way I would hunt in it because it had a microfabric exterior and it did not mask the noise of the polyurethane membrane. Anytime you got something that's windproof or waterproof, it's going to have some, some form of a membrane in it, and you have to have something over the exterior of that membrane to mask the noise of that membrane, especially when it's cold. The colder it is, the more noise, the more crunchy that membrane's going to be. I can remember when I first got into this membrane thing, which would have been the early 2000s, I used to put them in the freezer. I used to put suits with membranes in the freezer, which gets down to about 5 or 10 degrees, then I'd take them out in the morning and see how noisy they were when I ruffled them. And anything with a micro microfabric exterior over the membrane was extremely noisy, too noisy for me to hunt in it in cold weather. Obviously in warm weather it's not as noisy because it's more flimsy. But this windbrace suit 
other than my saddle hunter suit for cold weather, this is my favorite scent lock suit because most of my hunting is done below 50 degrees. You know, early season, I hunt in the early season and I typically wear a Savannah lightweight. Um, but my serious hunting is once it starts getting into pre-rut, you know, when it starts getting colder. These are in my van all the time. First thing I'm gonna show is my base garments. I am an icebreaker guy, icebreaker merino wool. I'm a big merino wool guy, let me put it that way. Icebreaker just happens to be the best brand out there, so that's what I buy. Now this is a 200 weight merino wool icebreaker top. That's a 260. And I have a 260 bottom. Then I have something that you guys are gonna think is really, really strange, but uh, I repped for this company and I thought, what the heck, I am gonna try these. This is a company called Heat Holders. You might have heard of their socks. These are ladies' tights. So there's a better picture of it right there. They're made by Heat Holders and they have a really unique pile on the inside. They're very warm and they have feet in them. That's what the packaging looks like. You can see that lady with those tights on and they have feet in them. And these are extremely warm. I've been very impressed with these. Might seem a little strange to wear ladies clothing, but if it works, I don't care what it is. If it works, that's what I wear. And I wear these a lot. When I'm hunting and it's cold out and I'm gonna wear a heated vest, I will always put on my 200 weight base top. That's because it's thinner than the 260. It's a lighter weight. And that way, because the heated vest is right over top of that base, I'm gonna feel the heat more because it's, it's, there's not as much fabric there to have that heat go through. When I'm wearing the vest and I'm wearing, if I were wearing a 260, which is a heavier base garment, I wouldn't be able to feel the heat from the vest as well. So I wear a lightweight top base when I'm going to use a heated vest. Icebreaker, the brand, they make casual wear clothing. So they're a very premium merino wool company. First Light is also another really good merino wool company and I think they go by the same weights, 200 and 260, uh, maybe even 320. I do have some 320 icebreakers. But First Light and Icebreaker are your two premium brands, Icebreaker being a little bit better than First Light. They have a little bit better, more premium wool because they actually have their own sheep in New Zealand. Something else I have here, this is a, this is a blend. So this here is made by Scentlock and this has a lot of merino wool in it as well and they make two base garments. They make a midweight and a heavyweight. This is the heavyweight and it has considerable amount of merino wool in it as well. Now I found these last year. These have worked really, really good. If it's, if it's gonna be like in the single digits and I'm wearing my saddle hunter suit, this is the base I'll wear underneath my pants. So I'll put on those ladies tights and then I'll put these on. These are made by Badlands and these have 40 grams of Primaloft in the body of the, in the whole entire body of these pants. These were not cheap. They were like 150 bucks. Anytime you get anything with Primaloft, it's gonna be expensive. But uh, when it's down in that single digit temps, this will definitely keep your lower body warm. Usually your lower body you don't have issues with, but if it gets down in five, seven, eight degrees, uh, this definitely will help keep you warm. Concerning socks, I'm the same way, uh, I'm a big merino wool guy, so I've got a lot of merino wool blend scent lock socks. And then I have, as far as my heavyweight socks, again, icebreaker. Icebreaker merino wool heavyweight socks. Here's another, here's another pair. Socks are a big deal. You know, to keep your feet warm, you have to wear decent socks. Something that's gonna wick moisture and also the fibers in merino wool have qualities to, for insulation qualities. And again, I'm just showing cold weather stuff here. So if I were going out hunting and let's say it's gonna be anything in the 15 to 20, up to 30 degree temperatures, what I'll do is I'll wear the 200 weight merino wool base, then I'll put on the heated vest over top of that, 
and then I also have another thing I'll put over top of that and then I'll put on my saddle hunter jacket and when you're looking at heated vests and I highly recommend buying a heated vest I'm going to show you a couple here uh, make sure if you're looking at them online or in a store make sure you get one that accepts a USB standard power pack battery. There's several companies that do not allow you to use a standard power pack USB port battery. Yeah, that means you have to buy their own prioritized batteries, which are gonna cost you a lot more. To buy a USB battery, you can go, a lot of gas stations sell them, you can buy them at Walgreens, Walmart, uh, CVS, uh, Home Depot. You can buy them any place. Uh, so you want to you want to get batteries that are a minimum of 10,000 amp hours and you want to make sure you get USB power pack batteries and a 10,000 amp hour will typically last if you have your vest on medium it's typically gonna last you probably three to four hours this is a vest that's the battery it comes with Venustis it's got two USB ports on the top comes with a charger obviously and this it comes with a 10,000 amp hour battery which is pretty rare usually when you buy vests they come with cheesy little three to five thousand amp hour batteries which don't last you very long whatsoever so this comes with a decent battery but one thing I like about this it has some fleece interior it's got a little bit of insulation but it does not have a collar again I don't like collars I don't like all the collars balling up my front of my neck and making me gag and get a little bit of a gag reflex and then I have to drink water my throat gets dry so that's one reason I don't like collars also the collars they stick up some of them really high and I feel like they're gonna impede in my my shot once I release an arrow because a lot of them stick out where your gap in your string is between your string and your bow so this one is again Venustas you can buy this and they also sell bottoms I think they're like 120, 130 bucks per piece, which is actually pretty cheap. And another thing about this one, I didn't say, this has dual controls. So this has controls for the front and for the back separately. And they all come with high, low, and medium. And they have different light colors for whatever setting you have it on. Most heated vests come with a single control so when you when you adjust you're adjusting both sides this one's kind of cool because you can put more in the front and less in the back or vice versa and the battery goes in this pocket right here fits nice and neatly in this pocket and you can keep it in there as you're putting it on it stays tight in that pocket this is one I've had for several years I really like this one too this one is made by a company called Walston and again has the dual controls front and back and this one has an element in the collar this does have a collar so when I put this on I tip this this front left side of the collar down to make sure it doesn't stick up and impede with my shot so the right side is okay but I keep I tuck that underneath as I zip it up but this one here with that collar heat is is actually kind of nice in the back of your neck and this has insulation in it as well so even when you wear this as a layer garment, even if you don't apply the heat, uh, it's still gonna help keep your core body warm. This here is a heavy fleece vest that Suntlock made. I chopped off the collar and it's got some heavy, heavy fleece. So this is a really warm layering garment. It doesn't, it doesn't heat, but they do make a reactor heated vest. Uh, they're a little pricey. I think they're 200 bucks, whereas you can get them online for like 120 to 130 bucks. But they do make a reactor heated vest. Now this is a jacket I found in a store, uh, and they were closing them out for the season. And I think I paid 130 or 40 dollars for it. It's made by Hook. Now I'm not a big, I'm not a big believer in buying brand name stuff, and Hook's kind of pricey for what it is. Uh, in my opinion, so is Sitka. And I was just happened to looking through the store when I was up on a sales call. Uh, I was at Shooter's Range in Traverse City, Michigan, and they had this jacket, and I was looking at the label, and it has 100 grams of uh, 
Primaloft in it. Primaloft is absolutely the best insulation you can get. They make it in different grades. They make a gold, they make a regular, and this is the regular Primaloft. It's still awesome, awesome. And it's a really light exterior. It's a very light shell. So when it's like, you know, five, 10, 15 degrees, and it's gonna be really, really cold, and especially if you got a wind, I will put on my 200 weight base and I will probably put on my heated vest and then I will walk to my hunting location. If it's a really long way, I'll just put on my base and then my heat and then my sun lock saddle hunter jacket and I'll walk to my location and I'll carry the heated vest and this in my backpack and put this on in the tree or at the base of the tree so I don't overheat with my walk. But when it's really, really cold out, I'm gonna have on that 200 weight base, then I'm gonna have on a heated vest while I'm hunting, and then I'm gonna have on this 100 gram Primaloft hook jacket, and this also has a polyurethane membrane, this is windproof, and then I'm gonna have on my Saddle Hunter jacket. So I've got a windproof jacket, I've got a windproof layer below that, and then I also have a heated vest, and then my Merino wool 200 weight icebreaker base. And I can stay toasty, toasty warm. And I will probably, when it's that cold, have a hand warmer that I keep in my hands, in my pockets, on top of the Saddle Hunter, in the Saddle Hunter pants. I've already hunted in that weather uh, with high winds, you know, 20 mile an hour winds, and I was toasty warm, I was not cold. Layering is an art form, I'm telling you, man. Layering, once you figure out how to layer in cold weather, you just don't get cold. When I used to do it myself, I'd wear all my stuff out to my location and I would just be dripping wet with sweat underneath once I got there. So once you learn how to layer and keep your layers in your backpack and put them on at the base of the tree before you climb up, or once you get up in the tree, if you're comfortable changing in the tree like I do, and I'm gonna show you, that's the best way to go. You know, when it gets down bitter cold, I have these, Cellock makes these BE1 head covers, a heavyweight. They're a real heavy fleece interior. So I've got on my Spandaflage face mask, which I will show you. And I will put this on when it's really cold. The one I'm gonna show you in the video is not a heavyweight, it's a midweight. And then I also take this, this is just a Suntlock beanie, this has carbon in it as well. So when I'm physically walking out to go hunting, this is what I have on my head. And then these other pieces are actually in my backpack. So once I get to my location, I get up there, I take this off, I put on my spandiflage, put on my head cover, and typically I won't need this for a while because that'll keep me warm for a long time and maybe the entire hunt. But if I do happen to need this, this goes in my pack, I'll pull this out and put this on over top of that. And I usually put this on just to cover the top of my ears. I don't want it covering my hearing portion of my ear. I also want to point out concerning clothing and garments, hunting garments, I could be on several pro staffs and get all my stuff from free from quite a few high profile manufacturers, but I choose not to because they don't have any technology in it. I don't get paid a dime from Scentlock to endorse their products. I endorse their products because they work and I've killed a lot more deer because of it. I do Scentlock because it works. I've proven it to myself for 20 some years and I hunted 35 years 100% attention to the wind direction. And then I finally figured out when I first bought Scentlock, it took about a couple years of research on my own to learn how to properly care for it, store it, and use it in conjunction with clean rubber boots and a, and a clean backpack. I researched all that information myself. So they don't pay me. Obviously I'm making a little bit of money on the Saddle Hunter suit. They're paying me a little bit of a royalty, but it's, trust me, it's not a lot. Even back in the day when I designed Rivers West, I designed a suit for Rivers West called the Ambush Jacket, and it won the Field and Stream Best of the Best Garment Award in 2005. You know how much money I got paid for that? Nothing. I also designed their radial hat, which is a waterproof hat where your ears are exposed, and yet you're not gonna get anything wet. And I didn't get paid anything for that either. So, uh, I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this to help hunters be, get more opportunities and just become better hunters and not worry about wind direction and be able to have deer downwind without <laughs> worrying they're gonna spook. 
And I want you to know there's a lot of TV guys and a lot of high profile hunters on YouTube that are wearing clothes from companies because they get them for free or else they get paid a sponsorship. That's the only reason they're wearing them. I know that for a fact. That's not up for discussion with me because I know guys that are doing that, that were wearing something else and then somebody started giving them free stuff so they wore that. They were wearing technology clothing, Suntlock, and then they switched because they got the other stuff for free. You get paid to endorse something, to me, it means nothing. You have a monetary reason for endorsing it. Now I've climbed the tree, I always, always, 100% of the time, always wear Suntlock as my exterior during my entries in case I brush against vegetation, I don't leave any odor. Once I'm up in the tree, whether it's in the morning before daylight or I'm getting out there in an evening hunt, as soon as I get up in the tree, if I'm going to change my clothes, I take my gloves off because I need the extra dexterity for feel when I'm actually going to change, physically change my clothes in the tree. And my hands were wiped down with scent-free wipes prior to leaving the car, prior to putting on my scent lock gloves. So once I'm up in the tree, I'm all I'm settled in, lineman belt's gone, I'm hooked up to the tree tether, got my jacket on. What I will do, I'll take off my jacket. My my panels are still underneath my butt. Okay, I have not separated them. They're still overlapped. It's still a six inch seat. Now for you guys that might be a little bit afraid because a six inch seat, you haven't hunted out of a saddle long enough and you're, you think a six inch seat might be a little bit on the shallow side, you know, you can go ahead and widen them up a little bit to make you feel safe. But the shallower your seat is when you're changing your clothes, the better. So I like to keep them overlapped. I reach around in my pack. Okay, this is that vest. The battery is in the pocket. And I do this in the pitch black. And when you zip these up, you have to make sure that you zip this underneath all of your stuff. So there, I put on my vest. And you see there's no collar here, but it's got panels here for heat and panels in the back. And I've that the uh, Walston one I have actually has a panel in the back of the neck. It has a short collar on it. So I put this on. Now this is for a really cold weather hunt. I'm going to have my heated vest over my 200 weight icebreaker merino wool. Then I'm going to reach in there and grab my, this is that hook. 100 gram Primo Oft insulated jacket. I'm going to put that on. Zip that up, and when I when I zipped up this up because this has a collar right now, until I cut this collar off, I turn that collar down inside. So I'm turning that collar down on the inside, so there is no collar. And once you get used to doing this, as you can tell, it's a pretty simple process. You know, I've got on a base garment, I've got on a heated vest, I've got an insulated hook jacket over top of the vest, and now I've got this on. I actually thought I was gonna have to use a large to put three layers underneath it, but uh, this medium's got plenty of, plenty of space to do that. So once you've got that on, this is not the way I'm gonna sit. This is going to be uncomfortable because everything's kind of draped over the edge of the saddle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tree, lift up, and I'm going to reach down here and go to my inner layer, which is going to be the vest. I'm going to pull it down, and then I'm going to go to my next layer, which is going to be the hook jacket, and I'm going to pull that down. And then I'm going to go to my outer layer, my exterior saddle hunter jacket, and pull that down and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Reach up underneath there, grab the vest, grab the jacket, grab the exterior saddle hunter jacket, and then I reach down, I grab the outer panel of my ESS, 
reach around, pull it up, and then I widen the seat how I like it. Then I reach down here in front, and kind of as I lift my weight up a little bit, pull everything down tight. So now everything's tight. This is kind of how I like to sit. Usually right in here with my knees bent about 30 to 40 degrees to the tree is how I like to sit with my knees into the tree. These pant pockets, I mean, they are perfect. My arms are 100% totally relaxed. Now, as far as my head cover, so I use this spandiflage. I think it's made by Hunter Specialties. And you'd actually be surprised how warm this is. And I have these safety pins on here. Everything has a reason. So this safety pin pins to the very top of the collar on my base garment. Next is my head cover with drop down face mask. I like to put on my head cover so my ears are exposed. And then I like to take the head cover and tuck it in at least under my exterior jacket. Then I zip everything up. So that's basically right there how I'm hunting. And then if I start to get cold, you know, once I get up the tree, I've walked in with this Suntlock beanie on. I take that off, I put it in my backpack. You know, this is pretty much what I hunt with right here. And then if I get colder, you know, once it starts getting daylight after you sit here for about an hour, you start getting cold, I'll reach in and grab this or a camo one. I have camo ones as well. And I'll just put this on and just cover the tip of my ears. I don't like to have my ears covered up because I want to be able to hear. So anyway, this is pretty much how I'm hunting. Now these are Manzella gobbler gloves. They do not make these anymore. And Manzel is owned by Isotoners, which is a premium glove maker. And these are just stretchy fabric, and they are super comfortable. They have little rubber dots, so you can, they have some dexterity to them. And they're relatively warm. And I wash them in scent-free detergent, and I wash these every other set. I mean, I've got like 20 pair of them, so I always have clean ones. I do the same thing with this. The Spandaflash head cover gets washed at minimum of every two sets, and I've probably got 20 of these. So anything that's not sent like gets washed every two sets, and then I'm very cautious what I touch and handle when I have these gloves on. So this is my sit. Usually I'm sitting where this is, I'm straight down and below my girth hitch, and my pack's right here handy. Now, once I get my stuff out of my pack, what I will do is I will squash it down. I don't make that much noise. I do it quietly, obviously, but I'll squash it down so it has as low a profile as possible. It's not something else sticking out of the tree. I like to move around the tree, keep the tree as a hiding buffer, you know, and keep it, keep it where there's as little profile sticking out away from the tree as possible. Also want to give a shout out to Tree Hopper on making this phenomenal ring of steps. These steps, man, you put these on a ratchet strap, they are solid. You saw me move around the tree. These don't even wiggle. They're awesome. So again, Tree Hopper, I don't know what the hell he calls them, but they're, uh, they're ring of steps. And I suggest if you do get a ring of steps from Tree Hopper and you can buy your own ratchet strap wherever you want any store sells ratchet straps um, get at least six i've got six on this and i could spread these out a little bit wider so this tree here is probably 16 inches in diameter 14 to 16. Uh, you could easily hunt an 18 inch diameter tree with six steps they'd be gapped a little bit farther apart but they would be fine if interested, the links to many of the podcasts I've been on or for information about my two-day whitetail workshops that take place in March and April, please visit my website at deer-john.net. Thank you for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and to receive notifications for future videos, please subscribe.